Good morning, Cross and Crown. Welcome to worship. We're so glad you're here with us. My name is Pastor Stephanie Lape, and we are at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not yet. And there's three videos uh, that are going to be up today. One is this worship. Secondly, we have a children's sermon. And third, we have a Bible study coming up that is our first day talking about the book of Exodus, where Moses, through the work of God, leads the people, the Israelite slaves, out of Egypt and into the promised land. So please check out all of those videos. This morning, Brent Tuominen is unable to be with us like he was last week, um, but he will be back I believe next week. Uh, still, here we are in our sanctuary, and it's a pleasure to be here. And I've heard from many of you that it's a pleasure to at least get to see it. I know right now we're not able to all be together, but at least we get to see the sanctuary decorated in white for All Saints Sunday. So today, All Saints Sunday around the world is where we remember our departed loved ones. So we have special prayers and thoughts for those that we personally know. Maybe they've died in this last year or maybe even years ago and you might still be grieving and missing them and, and maybe you always will. And so we remember those who grieve and mourn and we also celebrate the eternal life and the resurrection of all of these loved ones as they now are joyfully seeing God face to face. We also today especially remember all those who have died this year from COVID-19 in the United States and around the world. It's been quite a year of loss. And so we remember all of those who mourn and grieve and we stand in solidarity with them. And we also celebrate for the new resurrected life of so many saints in this great cloud of witnesses. November is our stewardship month as well in our church. And so we will be hearing today little bits of uh, talking about some stewardship things in the sermon, and we'll hear that all throughout uh, this month. But also we have for th this Sunday and then the three next Sundays, we have some people from the congregation who have volunteered to speak a little bit about why it's important to support the church. And so today we're going to hear a little clip from Sandy Devine, and she's on council and she works a lot with outreach and evangelism, and she also feels that it's important to support the ministries of the church. So thank you, Sandy, for doing that today. Let's see, we are planning an outdoor worship service, and uh, I know so many of us really want to meet together. Um, we don't yet have a date exactly for that. We would love for it to be at the end of November to start Advent. We're not 100% sure that we're going to meet that date because there's so much to do to prepare for a very safe outdoor service. We need to just make sure that everything is in order and that we have written protocol, that we cover all of the legal bases for the state of California and our county of San Bernardino. So just, just so you know, our council and I are working very hard behind the scenes. We meet very frequently and we get lots of advice and help from other people. And so uh, please keep us in prayer. Now we also are going to continue offering online worship if you're not quite comfortable meeting in person and that's totally fine and totally understandable and you're still part of our congregation, of course, our, our family here at Cross and Crown. Um, so we will still be online um, and we'll have both of those opportunities. So more information is to come, just stay tuned for that. Rancho Cucamonga Family Resource Center is collecting food, and for November, the food of the month that we collect is dried beans. Also, they're collecting specific types of food to put together Thanksgiving dinners for people. So you should have received an email about that. And in that email, you see the list of all of the different Thanksgiving foods that they need. So if you would like to donate Thanksgiving food or dried beans or anything else, please dig down deep and be generous and then go and, and give right to the Ranch Cucamonga Family Resource Center there on Arrow Route in uh, the city. Uh, if you can't make it for whatever reason, just leave the food outside of the church door in a bag, of course, non-perishables. And one of us that comes by the church will take it there for you. Okay, at this point, oh, one more thing. Wednesday night, we are continuing our faith and film study. And as you all know, I'm sure this is voting week for our country. So we are watching the film called Suffragette about when women struggled and, and won the right to vote. Uh, all of these films that we watch are on Netflix. So you should be getting an email about that. And if you want to participate, then watch the movie Suffragette 
And then Wednesday at 7 p.m., click on that emailed link that has that Zoom link in it, and you'll be moved right into the Zoom room. Now, somebody asked me, can I go ahead and, and join the group even if I haven't watched the movie? Absolutely. Maybe you don't have Netflix. Just stop on by anyway. It'll be part of a fun conversation about voting and, and what women did to kind of get you know, equal rights in terms of voting. Um, and we'll pray for our nation as we're all waiting you know, the results of this election. Uh, and so, yeah, come on and, and join us. Okay, at this point, we're going to go ahead and light our candle. And we have here what we call the Christ candle. And this symbolizes Christ being not only in the sanctuary, but everywhere you are. So if you have one at home, go ahead and light that. And remember that Christ is always with us and binds us all together as the church. Also, I have another candle here, just one, but it symbolizes so many that we remember on All Saints Sunday. So when I saw some of you um, Friday for Holy Communion, I suggested if you want to, to have two candles this time. One is the Christ candle and one symbolizing your beloved departed that have joined the church triumphant and are now part of the great cloud of witnesses. With this candle, we remember all those that we have loved and lost, and we proclaim their resurrected life together with Christ. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. God of compassion, by the power of God, Elijah provided bread and oil for the widow and her household. By faith in God, the widow provided food and water for Elijah. Give us hearts to love one another so that in providing and in receiving, we too might experience the unimaginable power of God through the one who has provided life itself, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, Cross and Crown family and friends. I'm Sandy Devine, and I'd like to share just a short story with you. Last fall, my life journey brought me back to Southern California, to my close family and friends. I wanted to stay here and spend time here with them. The very first Sunday that I came back, I went to church at Cross and Crown with my family. And what I remember is how welcoming, open, friendly, and caring everyone was. I felt already a part of God's community as we moved through the service. For those of you that know me, I like to bring my Bible to church and read the lessons and the gospel along with the readers. As I was opening my Bible, it went to a special verse that brought this church, my family, my life, into a very faithful perspective for me. And I'd like to share that with you. Acts 15.4 When they came down to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders to whom they reported everything done to them. I heard, welcome back. Thank you. A reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except 
to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our word of the day is a reading from 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 1 through 24. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastwards, and hide yourself by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the wadi. But after a while, the wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, where, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow there was gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him from her bosom, carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging, and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen. We're continuing on with these incredible Old Testament stories. I'm so glad we're doing this because we're looking at so much that could easily pass us by in the richness of the Old Testament if we weren't focusing on these amazing stories. So today we have this one from 1 Kings. Here we have this prophet Elijah. 
He is sent by God, led by God, he trusts God, and yet the river, the wadi, dried up because there was no rain and he needed to survive. And so God told him, go to this widow and ask her to feed you. So he went to the widow, who already widows in that time wouldn't have been doing very well. Their support came from their husbands and she had none, but she did have a dependent, a child. This widow didn't have a lot of food. She had just enough to make one last meal for herself and her son. And then she said, we will eat it and then die. Imagine the hopelessness in her heart not only that she can't live any longer, but she can't take care of her son either. Her husband had died, and now her child will die, and she will die. And that would be the end of the story as she understood it. And here was this man, this stranger. She didn't know him from anybody. And he came up to her in her moment of desperation already, and he asked even more from her, give me something to eat. This is insult to injury. She not only didn't have enough for her own family, but she did not have any to offer hospitality to an absolute stranger. But he said, don't be afraid. The prophet, and remember the word prophet means mouthpiece. They are a mouthpiece for the word of God. The prophet proclaimed God's word, don't be afraid. We find that proclaimed in one way or the other in the Bible 365 times. Significant, one for every day of the year. Don't be afraid. Make the bread, make the cake, as he called it. You will eat, but give me some too. This asked of her to have great faith. And she had it. She's a hero in this story. The ability to trust in the unseen and also the ability to care, not just about her child, but about Elijah, somebody else's child. The ability to care for a complete stranger who wasn't her own kind, her own family, her own community, her own neighborhood, the ability to reach outside of her family, her circle of concern, her circle of responsibility, and to care and to act on behalf of somebody else. She was able to eat then for many days. This jar never emptied of flour, of meal as it was called, and the other jug of oil also never emptied. It's one of those miracles that's similar to the ones we see in the New Testament where Jesus multiplies the loaves and fish and feeds thousands of people. Here we have this unemptying jar of food, miraculous from God. And the miracle also that she had the faith to step in to this situation and believe that she had enough to care about somebody else. Then her son got sick. Her son was deathly ill and it looked yet again like he was going to die. And she was so distraught as any good mother would be, of course. And Elijah was still there and Elijah in turn cared about her and her child. He didn't just care about those in his immediate circle of influence, his immediate sphere, his family, his friends, his colleagues, his coworkers. He cared about somebody else's child, looking outside of the normal sphere of who we would most likely care about. The story is beautiful because it shows that kind of care that we so often see in the stories of Jesus. Now today is All Saints Sunday, where we talk about how your relatives and mine that have died physically are alive and well spiritually in all the ways that really matter, in their consciousness, in their intellect, in their ability to love, in their ability to have joy and peace. My parents who both died of cancer don't have cancer anymore. 
They are now alive and well and joyful with God. They're also around me and I can sense their presence sometimes. And I hope you feel that way too with your loved ones. But the idea that all of our loved ones are alive and well has to do with the fact that they and all of us were given the gift of resurrected life. We were given this gift of knowing that death is not the end of things, that we've already begun eternal life, all of us, and we will conclude and continue that eternal life even after we stop physically breathing and our heart physically stops beating. It was a gift, and not just because we were in Jesus of Nazareth's immediate family, not because we were DNA part of his blood, his line, his children, or his nieces and nephews. Jesus loves other people's children. Jesus loves people from the European continent. Jesus loves people from the African continent. Jesus loves people from all over the world, regardless of our labels, regardless of our political persuasion, regardless of our skin color, regardless of our religious orientation. We are all beloved children of God. And Jesus loves all of us. That's why we can celebrate All Saints Sunday like we do. And yet we see glimmers of this, glimpses of this, even in the Old Testament, like in this story from 1 Kings. You know, my husband teaches ethics, and ethics is a really interesting branch of philosophy. Some people say that you always ought to do the right thing. Don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, and so forth. Others say, well, it depends on the circumstance. You ought to do what's best for that time and place and figure out sometimes the lesser of two evils. It's a fascinating course of study, and one famous ethicist is named Nell Noddings. Nell Noddings came into the scene and she said, you know, a lot of times ethics seems this cold, calculated discipline, thinking what should we do? Should we steal or not? Should we lie or not? And she said, but instead of it being cold and calculating, how about we also engage with our heart? And she coined what is called the ethics of caring. Not only do we want to do the right thing in a kind of rational, cold way, but we want to actually care about one another. So instead of saying, I'm not going to steal because it's wrong, it is wrong, but in addition, we say, I'm not going to steal from you because I care about you. This ethics of caring has permeated the field of ethics. So if you study ethics now, it won't just be about the mind and the rational self, but also about the heart. And that is what Jesus promotes, I believe. The ethics of caring. That's what Elijah did. That's what the widow did. They cared for one another. They didn't just coldly, rotely, routinely follow some kind of correct rule. They actually had a heart for one another. They cared that someone was starving in the case of Elijah and hungry. They cared that the little boy was sick and dying. They cared that this widow, this mother was grieving, even though they weren't in each other's family. They cared for another person's child. That's what we do today. That's why we wear masks if we have to go to the grocery store. Even though we're in a store with absolute strangers, we don't know these people, perhaps, and maybe we never will. But we don't just wear the mask because it's the right thing to do, because it's some rule or regulation or requirement. We do it because we care. We don't want anybody else to get sick. Same as we don't want ourselves to get sick. But we don't just do this for our children or our spouses or our immediate families. We do this for absolute strangers. That's why we collect food for the Rancho Cucamonga Family Resource Center, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because we imagine what it's like to be hungry. We empathize with those who can't put food on the table to feed their children. We care about those who struggle to get together a Thanksgiving meal. We actually have the ethics of caring. 
Now it's easy. It's easy to care for our own family. It's easy, anybody can do it. You don't need to be a Christian to care for your kids. That's what everybody does. I mean, if they're competent parents and they've got a good heart and they weren't victims of abuse themselves and so they're not abusing their own children. Most parents do the best they can with what they know at the time and care for their own child. It would be easy for me to care for Christian and Sophia, my kids. But as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm asked to go beyond that and to care for other people's children. This informs me as I wear a mask and collect food. This informs me as I vote, as many of us will do this week, not just about issues that affect my family, but how do these issues affect all of us? And my faith is my guide, even in the polling place, as I hope it is yours. Now that will come out different ways for us, depending on your and my perspectives and vocation and however God is leading us to do things, your way of caring might look different than my way of caring. We all have different gifts and abilities and perspectives. So there's not just one rule about how to do things, but it's with the foundation of actually caring for other people. This is Stewardship Month. And one of the things I want to lift up about why it's so important, I believe, to support the ministry of the church is that the church, Cross and Crown, and the Universal Church for 2,000 years has been an unbroken lesson in this. It's been a countercultural, revolutionary lesson in this that we're not just called to care for our own but we are called to care for other people's children. Your children will be cared for by me. My children will be cared for by you. And we are all in this country and in this world, one big community where we care for one another, like the widow did, like Elijah did. The church has often made mistakes. I'm the first to admit that. And as we said last week on Reformation Sunday, the church must always be reformed by the Holy Spirit. The church and every human institution must always be reformed to do better, to repent for mistakes and move forward, and to do better in terms of peacemaking and justice and love and caring. And so I could go on and on. I could lecture for hours of the mistakes the church has made over 2,000 years around the world. However, that's not the whole story, and I'm part of the church, and I'm proud to be a part of the church. I'm happy, I'm grateful to be a part of the church because of all that it's done right. And in 2,000 years, we have not just been told the message, take care of your own people, support family values. Because again, everybody does that. That's easy, that's a low bar. But our church has called us to stretch further, to be like Christ and care for the world, to be like the great prophet Elijah and the widow at Zarephath, to care for other people's children. And if that's not a reason to support the church, to support Christian ministry, I don't know what is. It's a whole philosophy. It's a whole worldview. It's a whole ethic of very broad love. Love that might look foolish to those who don't understand the gospel. But you understand, and I bet there have been times in your life when people in the church reached out to you and held you up and supported you as good communities do, not just caring for themselves, but caring also for you and your children and reaching out beyond the boundaries and beyond the walls and beyond political persuasion and beyond sexual orientation and beyond skin color and beyond any other label that we would use to divide and push people away. Jesus doesn't do that. And we see here that neither did Elijah and neither did this widow. So may we follow these great examples of Christ who gives eternal life to all of us that we celebrate on All Saints Sunday. May we follow the examples of the widow who gave her very last bread to a perfect stranger with incredible faith that more would come for her. May we follow the example of Elijah who gave of himself to save a child. 
even one outside of his own family. May we know that we are given the Holy Spirit strengthening us to love and to care in this kind of way. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All blessing, honor, and glory, all wisdom, praise, and thanks be yours, O God of our salvation. We pray in communion with all the saints on earth and heaven, with the martyrs and the faithful in all ages, and in the name of the Lamb who was slain, who alone is worthy of worship. God of the Church, open our hearts and our eyes to see your presence in the outcast, in the stranger, and in other people's children. Make us bold in proclaiming your love for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, bless creatures and plants of all sorts. Pour out your blessing upon all life and sustain us with your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, help us to see you at work in all people and all tribes and make us to see your image in our neighbors. Guide this country, particularly this week, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common American needs and seek our common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the lost and the despairing, pour out your love and your blessing upon the brokenhearted and the anxious and provide a keen sense of your presence. These are trying times, God. Many are anxious. Please help them and support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, work in and through doctors, researchers, and all healthcare staff to bring comfort and wholeness where it is most needed. We pray for those who are currently suffering from COVID-19 and all other diseases at this time. We also pray for those who have mental health concerns, that they get the help they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of this assembly at Cross and Crown, deepen our trust in your promises and work your will and your word in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year or even those who have died beyond that. We pray also for the 230,000 Americans that this year have died from COVID-19. We pray for the 1.19 million worldwide citizens that have this year died from COVID-19. Welcome them all into your arms. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us with your healing presence. Make us hungry for justice. Strengthen our faith and increase our love for others, especially those we find most difficult to love. Amen. 
Let us pray now as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive your blessing. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Thank you.